In this video, we are going to talk about tips for beginners, how to handle your trowel properly, little things that you can do to improve your skimming, and as a little bonus at the end, only because you asked for it, only because you got me in the community section. If you're not in the community section, get over there, go on my channel, hit community, there's all sorts going on over there. But you asked for it, tiger stripes, how to deal with tiger stripes. So let's get to it. The first thing I want to show you is how to plaster into an angle, into the corner between two adjacent walls or a wall and a ceiling, without getting the opposite angle covered in plaster. How to go in nice and neat. It's something that I see a lot of beginners do, and I did myself, and you make a mess of the other wall, because when you, you come across it, when you come across the angle, the plaster all squidges out where you've built it up and goes all over everything else and then you've got loads of clean up to do at the end. So follow this little tip now to make it so that you can go to the angles nice and neat. Right, the first thing I want to show you, I see beginners do this all the time. You've loaded your trowel, you're about to start from the ceiling and they go right into the angle there and put a massive blob of gear right in the corner and it's all out of shape. That's not where I'd start. So what I'd be more inclined to do Load my trowel, I start there, away from the angle, and then I take a bit, and I get another little bit. And that way, I'm not getting it all over the wall. Let me show you again, coming a bit closer so you can see. I load the trowel up, and start away from the angle, about an inch. I spread it out. I take a bit, and then I go in, into the angle neat. And that way, I'm not getting plaster, all over that wall. Yeah, away from the angle, take a bit, away from the angle. In case you're looking at that video thinking, Kirk, why are your clothes covered in crap? You're covered in plaster from head to toe. Let me explain to you. You'll have to excuse the state of me. I just plastered most of that media wall in one shot, so, well, apart from the two little sides in there and the bit under there because there's a bit of filling out but the rest of that the tops bottoms of the shelves the whole lot went on in one go so i ended up getting a little bit on me you know because i was crawling in that on shelves and stuff do you want another tip should we do one more I'll tell you what i'll give you one more tip and then we'll start talking about the tiger stripes let's look at how to roll your trowel so when you pull back you're only going one way and when you first start plastering, you're putting it on, you're putting it on, but you want to go two ways, don't you? You want to be able to pull your trowel back and then go forward and backward and forward. That's what all the good guys do, isn't it? You know, they go two ways with the trowel, but you always seem to get stuck, don't you? You come back and you try and go that way and you dig in. There's how to fix that. Now, the next thing I want to show you, which I've asked a few times, is how to come back. So, Let's forget the angle now, let me just show you the motion. You spread back, and then you stopped, and you've got to do it again and again. This is how you do it, you want to roll your trowel. It's back. It's just a little roll. The trowel just rolls. Come closer, Keith, so you can see. So what you're doing is, you go in there, you're not digging back in like that, which all beginners seem to do. You've got to roll the trowel so you're coming back. Now watch the trowel roll. Rolls. And then fold. Rolls. And it's just something you've got to practice. It's just a roll of the trowel. If you look at the end of the trowel, it's got a slight curve to it. And there'll be gear on the back of it, and that's what you're actually rolling, that gear. It's behind there, rolling. It's just a rolling motion. Oh, he's dropped a bit. Look at the look of disbelief on that face. <laughs> right, come on, we're doing tips. Let's just do one more. I feel good, let's do another one. You know when you go up the angle and you're trying to square your angle off and your trowel touches the other wall or you, on the ceiling it touches the wall and it judders, it's like bum, 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 when you're trying to go along. Does that drive you crazy? Do you want to show you how to fix it? There we go. 
Another thing I want to show you, I've been asked, how would you come down the wall or the adjacent angle without your tri rubbing in? So let me show you what I mean. See, watch this. Come up, come up close here now. If I come down here now, Judders, no good. Easiest thing in the world to fix. Take your trowel, when you come out, come off on a slight angle. See the end of your trowel there is not touching the wall no more. I'm slightly off it. So I'm just away from it now. No judder. Yeah? If you keep your trowel square on, judder. If you slightly angle the trowel off, so only one corner is touching the wall, no judder. Right, let's talk about tiger stripes. You might call it rippling, bulging or tiger stripes, but basically when the plaster goes all audible and you're trying to get it nice and smooth. So let's talk about what causes it, how to stop it and how to fix it. So we've all seen it, these horrible smears that you get at the wall. And that's why we call them tiger stripes, because they're just like, they're like strings of, it looks like you've got melted cheese on your wall. There's a few things that cause it. Your plaster could be on too thick. You could be using water too early. You're messing around with it too much. Your mum always told you it'll drop off. Or your trowel is too new, it's not broken. So, they're the things that can cause tiger striping. And the easiest way to solve each one of them, if your plaster's too thick, check your wall first before you skim it. Get your feather edge out and check. If you've got to build up more than, say, four to five mil with finishing plaster, then you're going to need to put some bonding on first. I personally wouldn't, because I know I can build up with plaster because I know how to deal with the tiger stripes if they appear. But... As a bit of a fail safe, get your wall nice and straight first, fill out any bits with a back coat plaster. That's going to save you the whole world of hassle. The other situation is when you use water too early. If you're flattening in and you're soaking your wall with your flat brush or spraying it with your little squirty bottle for no reason, you're going you're gonna to cause these tiger stripes by putting too much water back into the plaster. doesn't need it. A lot of the time you can feel... If you, as plaster sets, it sort of goes sticky. If it's hard to trowel over your plaster, you might not need to apply water to it. The water just lubricates the trowel. See, if I'm just doing one wall over plasterboard, say, I've only got the one wall on, I probably won't use any water because I won't need it because I'm not chasing the plaster. If the plaster's setting a bit faster than what I can get to it, then I'll apply a bit of water just to lubricate the trowel and help me smooth it out. So what I'm trying to say to you is, you don't always need water. See, a lot of beginners, they feel they've just got to flick water on because they've seen other plasterers do it. But if you're putting water onto plaster that's already wet, that's going to cause an issue for you. So don't apply water if you don't need it. You'll feel your trowel sticking and pulling. And in that case, that's when you apply the water. The other thing is, a lot of beginners get tiger stripes because they mess around with the work too much. When you're putting it on the wall, if you keep going over and over and fiddling around with the same section, you're going you're gonna to get these tiger stripes because you're messing with it too much. You've got to sort of get it on neat in one or two passes and move on to the next bit. Don't keep going back over and back over. If you're trying to build it up thicker and thicker, then you probably should have built it out of back coat plaster first. So if you find that you have to keep going with the same bit so much, it's probably because you fail to prepare the wall as good as what you could have done. And the final point is it's very hard to leave a lovely finish with a new trowel. So if you get a trowel and the edge of it is blunt, that's going to cause streaking on your wall as well. Ideally, you want your trowel broken a little bit. So there's nothing you can do. When you get a new trowel, they just come new. You can't buy them broken. They sell pre-warning trowels, but let me tell you, they ain't pre-warning. There's nothing like breaking a trowel in with some sand and cement. If you get on a big rendering job, you can break a trowel in lovely with sand. Sharp sand and cement works wonders on a new trowel. But 
If you find yourself with a new trowel, one thing you can do is, is rub the edge of it on a, on a concrete paving slab, on a curb, you know, anything you can sort of do. Imagine trying to sharpen a knife on a stone. You're doing the similar sort of thing with your trowel. It's the best way I can explain it. As a demonstration of what I'm talking about, I'll use this little float because it's thicker, it's easier to demonstrate. Imagine this is your plastering trowel and this is the, the metal blade. When you get a brand new trowel, the edge of the blade's still square. When you've broke it in, you've took this bottom corner off. You imagine, it's like sharp, it's like a knife. This bottom corner's gone. So the bit that's touching the plaster is nice and smooth because it's sharp. Whereas when you get a new trowel, that edge is square. So it's sharp on the plaster, it's dragging the plaster. So once it's broke in, that bottom corner's gone. It's not going to drag on your wall it's going to smooth over it even if you give it more edge it's still quite smooth that's the difference with a broken in trowel so okay now we know what causes tiger stripes and we know what to avoid doing to stop it in the future but what if it does come about again how do we fix it when they appear so this is what i would do if I'm plastering a wall and say it's on a bit too thick or it's stayed a bit wet in one place and I've been over it a couple of times and these tiger stripes appear, what I would do is just step back from it, finish the rest of the wall that needs you to go over it and we'll come back to the tiger stripes in a minute because going over it more and more makes them worse. So just leave that section of the wall now and carry on where the tiger stripes aren't. Then... This is how I deal with it. There's probably other ways. It's just how I deal with it. Take me flat brush. I'm going to dip it in the water. Shake it off a little bit. So the brush has got a little bit of water in it. I'm going to go over to the tiger stripes. I'm going to brush the wall. One direction. Vertical. Up and down. All over where the stripes are. Like I'm painting the wall. And I'm going to leave brush marks in the wall. Now you've got to do this at the right time. If the plaster is soaking wet, if you've just second coated it and it's like literally still sticking to your fingers when you touch it, if it's too wet, this needs leaving longer before you brush it. But if you're about second trowel and you've got these tiger stripes, take your brush, brush the wall one direction, then brush it another way. You've sort of done like a cross hatch on the wall, all over where the tiger stripes are. You've brushed it. Leave it. Leave them brush marks in the plaster now go over everything again and come back to your brush marks last yes you're going to feel like it's going to set on you you're going to feel like it's going to lose it you need to give it about 15 20 minutes for this to work so just leave it with the brush marks in smooth over everything else come back to your brush marks it may have picked up a little bit you may need to flick a little bit of water on to trowel it but when you trowel over it it's it's going to get rid of those tiger stripes what you've basically done with the brushing you've opened up the surface of the plaster you've let a bit of air get to it to dry it out and then you're going to be able to smooth it off it'll just come down a lot nicer now if they reappear it means you've got back on it too soon you've troweled over it again too quick so if they're starting to reappear stop put the brush marks back in and wait till your next go round it might be easier if you understand timings. You may possibly be smoothing over it too soon, in which case you're messing around with it too much, as we've already addressed. And if you're flicking water on, you could be doing a couple of things to encourage these tiger stripes. There might be a few factors. It could be on too thick. You're messing with it too much and you're adding water. So you're doing all these things all at once. So you may need to leave it longer. There's another video about timing which I'll link at the end and you'll be able to go on there, touch tests and all that sort of stuff to know when you should be troweling it. But that's what I'd do. I'd brush it a couple of different ways. Leave it, leave it, leave it. You won't lose it. It's not going to set overnight. If it starts changing colour, if it starts going dark, get on it. But if it's not going dark yet, just step back, let the stuff firm up, let the air get to it, then trowel over it. Now, if you want to know about the perfect timing, touch tests and when you should be trialing over your wall check out this video here and if you want to know a few more advanced little techniques how to improve your skimming check out this video guys if you've enjoyed this give us a thumbs up if you think it could help someone else feel free to give it a share but whatever you choose to do 
Thanks for watching.